with the release of Sword and Shield on the 15th of November, I've jumped onto my sketch pad, put together three new designs for you to represent your Team Starter, Team Skull Bunny, Rookie Gang, or Team Sobel. Hop over to the Teespring store now. You can grab a 10% discount with the discount code STARTER. Hello friends and welcome to week three of our flinch squad circuit so we're in the 2020 season we are still in the ultra series so this is the first part of this series and um, the feature match this week is between Salkran and Shade so you've got Salkran on the bottom of your team with the team of Incineroar, Xerneas, Rayquaza and Serena and then you've got Shade on the top of your screen with the team of Duskman, Necrozma, Incineroar, Rayquaza and Tapu Fini so um, both players doing really well so far in the circuit and uh, I'm really looking forward to featuring both of them players we haven't featured so far this season so it's going to be a really good one we've had some really cracking matches this week if you've missed any of the previous week's matches uh, i will link a card up above for you in the top right hand corner you can click on that i'll take you over to the playlist you can check out the matches so far and without further ado we'll get straight into this one as you can see shared on the top of your screen rocking those nice mirrored sunglasses he is going to lead out with the Necrozma and the Incineroar here. So is the Duskman Necrozma likely going to be Ultra Necrozma as well. So something that, that Salkar needs to watch out for as he leads out with the Incineroar and Xerneas on his side of the field. Both sides of the field are going to cycle their Intimidate support through that ability on the Incineroar. So and Salkar is going first, indicating that it might be faster than the opposing Incineroar on Shade side of the field. But maybe it's a speed tie, which it likely is a lot of the time in the Ultra series. So we'll get straight into this turn one. Salkar going to withdraw that Xerneas. Doesn't want to take any big damage from this Dustman. The Cosmo is threatening it here. Turn one, as we see, it switch out for the Rayquaza. Now going to activate that airlock ability with the Necrozma just going for a protect this first turn. And not wanting to take any damage from the potential Incineroar on Salkran's side of the field as a Faker comes into that Protect. And a Snarl comes out from the opposing Incineroar. Does miss the Rayquaza though and just does a little bit of chip damage to the Incineroar on Salkran's side of the field whilst reducing that special attack damage. So we'll get into turn 2. We are going to see the Rayquaza burst and Mega Evolve. It is going to turn into Mega Rayquaza here, become a lot more powerful and activate that Delta Stream ability that it does have access to. So we'll see that on the screen right now, flickering around the screen and distorting the field as we see a crunch come out from this Rayquaza into the Duskman Necrozma. Do some big damage. You've got to think that that is a banded Rayquaza as well from the damage there, followed up by a U-turn from this Incineroar wants to start Keeping those Intimidates in the back to cycle back in to make sure it's got better support later on against these physical threats on a shared side of the field. Now we do see the Xerneas hit the field again for Salkran as we do see the big Z move come out from this Duskman. It isn't going to be Ultra Necrozma, it is just going to be that plain old Duskman. I say plain old Duskman, it is still a badass as it does release the signature Z move so connecting with that mega Rayquaza gonna do some big damage but not quite enough to pick up the knockout there the Rayquaza hanging on barely as a U-turn coming out from the Incineroar on Shade side of the field into the Xerneas gonna pivot out and give Shade an option to switch up his ball position and maybe bring in he is bringing in the Tapu Fini here so it will activate that misty terrain Got to watch out if your Salkran potentially going to have access to something like Heal Pulse. Icy Wind's another thing that he needs to watch out for um, because the Dustman is threatened heavily from that crunch and Salkran has to know that. But we are going to see him just re retreat now. He wants to bring in the Incineroar to maybe take advantage of a Protect coming out from the Duskman on Shade so they feel because if it is so threatened. Um, but it does give... Uh, Salkran the opportunity to go for a Geomancy here. The Duskman not going to stick around, just going to switch out. The Incineroar going to hit the field again for Shade. Cycle and Intimidate back onto that Incineroar on Salkran's side, which it's more important. Doesn't really affect the Xerneas here, being more of a special attacker as we see a Moonblast fired out. No Geomancy coming out from the Xerneas here. Just into that Incineroar, getting a big critical hit and doing some nice damage there. Uh, and the Nature's Madness now from this Tapu Fini into the Xerneas, taking it down to 50% health and doing some nice work in the process. We're going to see the Incineroar now switch out from the Salkran, not wanting to stick around at all. As we see this Serena introduced to the field now, we are going to see this Geomancy activated from this Xerneas, taking the advantage of the Queenly Majesty ability from this Serena to prevent any fake out support from Shade side of the field. If you can pull this off, it really does put him into a very good position to close this match down going forward. So 
let's see what happens as the geomancy is just finishing off with those boosts here we will see if the tapu finiad has went for a nature's madness this time is it going it's going again into the xerneas here and going to take another 50 percent off as a snarl comes out it does avoid the serena this is cinema only hitting one target at a time but it hits the more important one here with that xerneas reducing its special attack boost down to just plus one now but it is still threatening everything on shade side of the field the incinero are going to retreat now and then across we're going to hit the field once again for shade as we do see a dazzling gleam come out from this Xerneas it doesn't quite pick up the knockout onto the Necrozma but a power whip coming out it does miss the Tapu Fini that is really unfortunate as a mist comes out from this Tapu Fini now mist it does prevent the uh, ability to intimidate any opposing uh, uh, any partnering Pokemon on your side of the field so if that Incinero decides to come back onto the field for Salkran, it cannot activate that Intimidate. The Mist will protect any Intimidate drops there. So we are going to see the Incineroar come back in for Shade. And of course, we're just going to protect this turn. Um, but you've got to imagine if the Serena has help and hand support, it can really start pumping out the damage still. As we see a Dazzling Gleam come out from this boosted Xerneas. Should be enough to get the Incineroar, which it is, and takes away that potential of any fake out support coming into this next turn, which you would imagine that's what Shade was trying to go for. Get the fake out support next to it so you can utilize this Duskman to maybe get a Trick Room up or just get damage out onto the field. Now, the Rayquaza are going to come out onto the field for Shade, but the problem is um, with this players that the queenly majesty is protecting against what would normally be a, an easy extreme speed knockout here we are going to see the rayquaza mega evolve but it's it's very prone to getting taken down from a dazzling gleam here so um shade has to be very careful with how he, he, he operates this turn if it's sash rayquaza it's in a way better position but we are just going to see a faint come out from the serena just to break a potential sash there and a dazzling gleam followed up it should be enough to get the duskman across my which it is and not enough to get the Rayquaza though, so bulky, bulky Rayquaza here. Maybe a helping hand would have been the better option there for Salkron to go down. So you see a Dragon Ascent now from this Rayquaza. It is going to be chasing down this Xerneas now, and it will be able to remove it from the field. And uh, it will come down to Salkron's Rayquaza versus Shade's Rayquaza. So it's going to be an interesting end game here. And uh, Shade's doing the best he can in a bad situation, really. I think taking the, the big damage early on from that crunch from the Mega Rayquaza on on Shade's side of the field made things very difficult for him. The Tapu Fini now going to enter the field once again for Shade. And I don't really know where to call this one because an extreme speed will pick up the opposing Rayquaza. The opposing Rayquaza can't go onto it on Salkran's side of the field because of that Queenly Majesty. And that's what we're going to see Salkran go for that. Take down the Rayquaza and the Power Whip now come out. This Serena is going to be able to pick up the knockout onto the Tapu Fini. And oh, it's not. It hangs on. It barely hangs on. Activating a berry. That is a huge turn here. Can he get an icy wind off? That would be big play if he can to slow things down. Um, but a Muddy Water coming out. The accuracy drops could come into play here as we get into this end game not going to be enough to take down the Rayquaza and not enough to do damage to this Serena the Serena really being the MVP MVP of the, the the game in this one I feel like it's done all of the supporting that it needs to the Rayquaza are going to switch out now Incineroar are going to hit the field for Salkarin he's got all the options left this Incineroar nearly full health as it does cycle in another Intimidate not very important here with another Power Whip coming out and this will be enough to close up the game for Salkarin and take it game one so that is a very good game for us to kick off with today Salkarin taking a lead but Shade got all the work to do in this game too he's got a lot of information though from game one so it'll be interesting to see how he does adjust and we'll get straight into game two and get into game two we are going to see Shade on the top of your screen again Salkarin on the bottom of your team as we see those mirrored sunglasses make another appearance here for Shade as he does lead out again with the Ultra Necrozma and uh, sorry the Duskman Necrozma and the Incineroar and Salkarin going again for the Incineroar and the Xerneas so the same leads from both players here but I think because of game one they've got all the information from that game we'll probably see a few adjustments here and it'll be interesting to see where both players go with this information that they received from game one the Intimidates 
cycling again from both sides of the field on to mainly uh, shade side of the field is more useful um, as we see a fake out come out turn one from this incinero into the dust main necrozma as a geomancy going to be set up straight away not risking not beating about the bush salkin going for that geomancy early on now you've got to think we have seen snarl from the opposing incinero on shade side of the field has he locked into that that will come into play if he has because that that special attack if it's just reduced by one stage makes such a difference especially when you've got a dust main necrozma to deal with the Xerneas on the opposite side of the field but we don't see that unfortunately so it's going to stay at plus two as we see a U-turn come out from Shade as he pivots out his Incineroar but has he got something else up his sleeve to counteract the Xerneas that's now boosted on Salkran's side of the field. You've got to think though that the Necrozma still causes a lot of pressure it has got access to that Z-move but if a double up comes with a Flare Blitz here it might be enough to take down this Necrozma. We do see the Moonblast into that slot and there is the Flare Blitz as maybe it is going for a trick room here to get that Snorlax set up. Um, but this, oh, the Flare Blitz is enough. It is a critical hit. You've got to think on minus one, it probably would have hung on. So that really shuts down the options for Shade now. It's going to get very difficult for him to do very much in this match, especially facing down against a Geomancy Zonia. But saying that, the Snorlax has just revealed stockpile. So if we can get a couple of stockpiles up, it's in a way better position to deal with this Xerneas, you know, it is boosting those defenses and then it can start throwing out attacks. Hopefully it's got Recycle, you would imagine it has, to get that Berry back with the Glutton ability, uh, making things a lot easier for it. Now we do see the switch out from Salkran with the Incineroar into the Serena to get around any potential fake out, but you know, Shade not falling for that one, just going straight up for the Snarl here, wanting to reduce the attack part on that Xerneas. Does connect, reducing that special attack stage by one, putting it to plus one now rather than plus two, as we are going to see another stockpile from this Snorlax. I think Snorlax's main prerogative now is to try and get those three stockpiles up, get itself into a real position where it can start just throwing out damage, not worrying about big attacks. And you can see the damage that it's already taking from the Xerneas after these stockpiles is a lot better than it would be normally so we are going to see a helping hand now from the Serena boosting this Dazzling Gleam and it is going to be enough to take down this Incineroar take the Snorlax down to just below 50% which procs that 50% berry giving it all that tasty health back but a full health with the Aya Papa berry and another stockpile the final stockpile coming out from the Snorlax it is set up now so Salkran's going to have a really difficult time dealing with it and he needs to probably have his Xerneas and his Rayquaza out on the field at the same time to make sure that he can just keep doubling into it, keep that pressure on and stop this Snorlax from running away with the game because it's going to, after the three boosts, it's max defense on both ends. It's going to be very difficult to deal with and a banded Ray and a boosted Xerneas seem like the best things that Salkran has in his arsenal to deal with it. We are going to see the Rayquaza come in and it is going to mega evolve now, activate that Delta Stream to the Field, but it's going to be so threatened from a helping hand which is what we're going to see from this arena now to support this Xerneas is it a Moonblast or is it a Dazzling Gleam it is a Moonblast and it is targeting straight into that Rayquaza to make sure that it does pick up the knockout there which it does one hit clean knockout with that boosted Geomancy boosted Moonblast what a mouthful and now we're going to see a recycle it's not like to get that big bad berry back so Snorlax sticking around it is going to be by itself it's against the world now it's got everything to play for so we are going to see a Moonblast let's see what the damage is like here <laughs> oh it does nothing does nothing U-turn coming out from the Serena here can the Snorlax I'd love to see the Snorlax pull this game out and take a win but we are going to see the Incineroar come in it is going to get an Intimidate off onto that Snorlax reduce that attack power down by one stage and Salkran needs to really utilize these Intimidates to reduce the damage this this Snorlax is able to pump out we are going to see the return come out fake out this next turn to stop the Snorlax doing anything and another moon blast here will take the Snorlax down below 50% but it will just activate another berry that it had from that recycle earlier on this turn giving it all that health back once again so it starts off again it's going to be a bit drawn out this one I think but I think if you are Salkran you need to get that Rayquaza onto the field to really start doing some big damage but we're going to see a bold play here Salkran going for the double Geomancy he's going to take two turns to get these boosts up but will it be enough after the uh, the double boost to deal with this stockpiled Snorlax we're going to see the U-turn finally from the Incineroar but 
Uh, Serena going to hit the field once again. Makes you think, has he actually brought the Rayquaza? Because that would have been a good time to bring the rain. I think you need to bring the rain. Just because it is banded. We, we had that information from turn one. Just to do the damage that you need. Doubling up. Especially with a doubled up boosted Xerneas. But I mean, you do have this, this Serena now. It has got help in hand. So help in hand. Plus four Moonblast will be doing a lot to this Snorlax. Not going to see that though. Going to see you turn now come out from this Serena. It does get a critical hit. So the extra damage there is really valuable. Incineroar probably going to come back in. Cycle those Intimidates once again. And he's playing the game very well. Salkran just making sure that he is keeping this Snorlax in check. But the Xerneas now has boosted up. We are going to see a belly drum. Is this the point where Snorlax gets totally carried away? Has it got the berry though? Has it got the berry? I can't remember. It has got the berry, so it puts itself back into a position now. It's got to face down against the fake out next turn, and it'll depend how much this plus four Moonblast does this next turn, uh, which is the big problem. Snorlax really would love to have Protect here. It would give it a bit of an option, but you can't have Protect with all these other attacks as the Moonblast comes out and doing some big damage there, and I think it's probably just about in range now to go down to another Moonblast, but Snorlax has done itself very proud in this match. Nearly got into a position and I think if maybe Shade had a few options around it to support it, it could have really done some work in this match. But we are going to see. This is a quick one this week. Salkron pick up the win 2-0 and do very well with this X-Ray team that we haven't seen so much of in the latter part of this series. So really nice to see it's still doing a lot of work here against Shade. But really nice to feature both players. I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. Do remember to drop a like on the video if you have. Do make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss any subsequent weeks and other Pokemon content on the channel. Now we see you all for the next one very soon so until then take care of yourselves and bye bye